Hi guys, welcome to the RPP Resilience Chemistry. Now we are discussing about uh, another lecture in coordination chemistry. So now today our topic is labile and inertness of the complex compounds. Labile and inertness of the complex compound. Now we start the our lectures on a reaction mechanism in coordination chemistry. Okay, so this is the first lecture in coordination chemistry. Okay, so reaction mechanism uh, in generally lability and inertness mainly depends upon the the substitution reactions. The substitution reactions. Okay, now we have the complex like either octahedral complex or uh, tetrahedral uh, square planar complex. Here the, these are the x, this is the y. Okay, whenever the incoming nucleophile replaces the y, now it becomes uh, like a, a nucleophile. Okay, this is the remaining all or same. Okay, now here the Y is replaced by the nucleophile. Sorry, nucleophile is replaced by the Y. Nucleophile is replaced by the Y. So this nucleophile replaces the Y group if takes less than one minute. That means if takes whenever we add the mixture of the these two com components, uh, then immediately it gives the uh, nucleophilic substitution. Such type of reactions, the such type of complexes are called labile. Okay, so are you, are you understood? So uh, if uh, a complex and uh, reaction mixer that may be uh, incoming a group uh, whenever we mix it together uh, within seconds within within a minute uh, if uh, a nucleophilic substitution takes place then such a type of complexes are called labile or it takes more than one minute or it takes more than one minute uh, sometimes it takes one day one month uh, whatever it may be so uh, one day one month uh, one uh, Okay, so however the the time it takes more than one minute, then it is called inert complexes. Inert complexes. Okay. Now let us go through the scientific evidences of uh, labile and inertness of the complex compounds. Okay. Now uh, the uh, scientist Tobe suggests that the lability and inertness definition. Okay. So the according to the Tobe, labile that means a complex, a complex of lifetime. is one minute or less than one minute is one minute or less than one minute then it is called a uh, uh, labile complexes inert complexes so same thing more than one minute more than one minute okay so these labile and inertness complexes will depends upon the like the activation energy of the uh, reaction mechanism activation energy of the reaction mechanism so if uh, the complexes will depends upon the stability stable and unstable then it's said to be thermodynamic stability now here it may it depends upon the activation energy then it is called kinetic stability so these two terms are kinetical kinetic terms kinetic stability of the complex compounds so kinetic stability which was explained by the two terms one is labile and another one is a uh, uh, like a inert complexes labile and inert complexes okay now how do you how do you find the lability and inertness of the complex compounds okay now i'll give the very simple and very easier four points so these four points very helpful to predict the uh, lability and inertness of the complex compounds now let us go through the those four points so four points enough to uh, predict the lability and inertness of the complex compounds Now we'll discuss the four points, very easier points to predict the lability and inertness of the complex. The first two points are regarding to the labile. Okay, so D0, D1, D2 configurations are labile. D0, D1, D2 configurations are labile. Now the second point, if electron enters into the EG orbital, then it is labile. If electron enters into the EG orbital, then it is labile. So if electron enters into the EG orbital, that means D4 configuration high spin. Now according to the like a crystal field theory, here the fourth electron entering into the EG orbital. So whenever the electron present in the EG orbital, then it is a, a labile complexes. Okay. Now we'll go through the inert. Here the here also two points, only two points. So the first point, third point. Okay. So D3 configuration plus three or more than plus three oxidation state more than plus 3 oxidation state then it is uh, inert okay plus 3 or more than plus 3 oxidation state then it is a uh, inert complexes so like uh, such as a uh, chromium plus 3 here d3 configuration like a uh, vanadium plus 2 d2 con d3 configuration okay but it is lesser than the uh, plus 3 that's why it is labile okay if in case of chromium plus 3 it is the d3 configuration it is a uh, inert complexes now the fourth point so d4 d5 
d6 okay d4 d5 d6 so in these three cases at in presence of low spin complexes that means in presence of strong field ions okay strong field ions we will get, uh, these three are considered as inert complexes these three will be considered as inert complexes why because so in case of low spin complexes uh, the electron cannot jump to the uh, like easy level so all the electrons present over the t2g t2g orbital then it becomes uh, the half life of the uh, half life of the complex becomes more and more okay so that's why here yeah, the low spin complexes uh, which is, is treated as inert complexes these four rules uh, which is enough to show the uh, like uh, liability or inertness of the complex compounds so especially these are uh, included in the octahedral complexes only okay the first point d0 d1 d2 are labile complexes now the d3 configuration it is plus 3 or more than plus 3 inert uh, if less than plus 3 then it is uh, labile complexes so d4 d5 d6 uh, low spin is inert that means uh, high spin are labile okay d3 d4 d5 d6 configurations so high spin are labile okay now the finally so d uh, what about uh, the remaining configurations d7 d8 d9 d10 so d7 means uh, if uh, electron seventh electron one two three like uh, even though it is a strong field four five six uh, seventh electron definitely it jump to the easy level so if any electron entering it to the easy level then it is level complexes okay so if d7 uh, having the one electron in easy level d8 having the two electrons d9 having the three electrons d10 having the uh, like a four electrons even though either strong field or uh, weak field again so that's why so all are having the uh, easy electrons uh, that's why all are labile complexes all are labile complexes but exceptionally so d8 configuration are in it so this is exception okay now how these complexes are labile or inert uh, according to the our theories okay so two theories was explained the lability and inertness of the complex compound one is VBT, another one is uh, like a uh, uh, crystal field crystal field theory okay now we'll go through the uh, vbt okay so we'll go through the vbt Now the first point according to the VBT, so we, according to the valency bond theory, so it is the octahedral complexes. Now here the T2G orbital set, these four are the T2G orbital, these two are the easy orbital set, easy orbital set. Whenever the electron entering into the easy orbital, okay, along the axis, so through the easy orbital, and uh, whenever electron entering into the easy orbital, now here metal D electrons uh, and electro ligand, ligand electrons, they are repelled to each other. So we have discussed uh, uh, like a coordination complexes splitting up the octahedral term. Whenever the ligand approaches to the uh, central metal atom, here the uh, like uh, easy orbital also, they are repelled to each other. Easy orbital electrons and ligand electrons they are repelled to each other. Now here, so which which appears like this. Okay. Now uh, it is the uh, like uh, original uh, first one bond length, but uh, due to the repulsion it it goes up, uh, it goes down. That means uh, bond length increases. Okay. So whenever electron entering into the easy orbital, bond length increases. So if bond length increases, metal to ligand bond strength decreases. Bond strength. Uh, decreases metal to ligand bond strength so if bond strength of the metal and ligand decreases uh, that is prone for the like a substitution reaction so the more favorable more favorable for substitution reaction so if it is more favorable to substitution reaction then it's said to be labile complexes then it's said to be labile complexes that is the, that is happened in case of electron entering into the easy orbital electron entering into the easy orbital now we'll go through the uh, valence bond theory conclusions okay so this is the uh, point regarding to the if electron uh, what will happen if electron entering into the easy orbital now we'll go through the uh, vbt explanation so according to the vbt valency bond theory so we are we are considered the complexes like uh, two types classified the complexes two types uh, one is uh, outer orbital complexes another one is inner orbital complexes so inner orbital means n minus 1d participation outer means nd or ns participation like sp3 d2 configuration 
lead to sp3 configuration okay whenever the inner orbital or inner orbitals are combined to form the like a hybridization that means uh, the presence of low spin complexes is it right or wrong so inner orbital uh, forms the inner orbital are participate in the hybridization that means all the all the electrons are paired up okay all the electrons are paired up what will happen now here it is the in presence of strong field it, it is only possible okay so the presence of strong field the d4 d5 d6 configurations are in it we are discussed over there okay so in presence of d2 sp3 configurations those are in it complexes in presence of sp3 d2 configurations those are labile complexes those are labile complexes according to the vbt these two points okay now however the nickel plus two configuration okay nickel plus two configuration is d8 that means sp3 d2 okay d6 d7 d uh, sorry d7 d8 d9 d10 even though strong field ligands hybridization is sp3 d2 Okay, even the strong field ligands, so hybridization is sp3 d2, doesn't matter. Okay, now d8 configuration is sp3 d2, hybridization is sp3 d2. So, according to the VBT, it is labile. According to the VBT, it is labile. But experimentally, it is inert complex. But experimentally, it is inert complexes. So, the inertness of nickel plus 2 d8 configurations was explained by the CFT, which is not explained by the VBT. We will go through the uh, like a uh, CFT. Okay, now the CFT of the CFT application. Okay, according to the CFT, uh, he was explained very clearly the D8 configurations by uh, inertness. Okay, so with the help of uh, crystal field activation energy, crystal field activation energy. Generally, the crystal field activation energy formula CFSE of uh, intermediate. Okay, CFSE of intermediate minus uh, CFSE of uh, uh, like a uh, complex, CFSE of complex this is the simplest formula for the crystal field activation energy crystal field activation energy with the help of uh, 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 such a crystal field activation energy formula we will calculate the cfae cfae means crystal field activation energy so if cfae is equal to negative or zero negative or zero or low then such type of complexes are called labile complexes. Okay, according to the CFT, CFT, crystal field activation energy is negative or zero or low, then it is called labile complexes. If CFAE is positive, then it is called inert complexes. Okay, we discussed in the valency bond theory, outer orbitals are labile, inner orbitals are inert. Now here, CFAE is negative, zero or low values, then it is labile. If CFAE value is positive, then it is called inert complexes. So now we'll go through the, uh, how how the calculation of CFAE is possible? Okay. Okay. So according to the CFAE, the crystal field activation energy. Generally, we will classify the uh, like a uh, systems two types. Now here it is. Uh, Octahedral complex. So whenever uh, it may be, it follows through the SN1 mechanism or SN2 mechanism. So if one electron like a uh, SN1 mechanism, so SN1 mechanism means uh, one of the electron that means a uh, carbocation intermediate is formed. Now here coordination number five. Okay. In case of SN2 mechanism, the nucleophile additionally com uh, coming out to the like uh, uh, ent entering into the structure, then it becomes coordination number seven. Okay. Now here it is SN2. Here it is SN1. So according to the SN1 mechanism, it is a square pyramidal intermediate. SN2 mechanism, it is possible for the pentagonal bipyramidal or octahedral wedge complex. Octahedral wedge complex. So the substitution takes place through the either square pyramidal or pentagonal bipyramidal molecule. Now let us discuss those square pyramidal intermediate say, crystal field activation energy value. Uh, sorry, crystal field stabilization energy value. So now crystal field stabilization energy of the like a uh, uh, pentagonal bipyramidal or octahedral wedge molecule. Octahedral wedge molecule. With the help of these crystal field stabilization energy, we will calculate the crystal field activation energy. Okay, now I will, now I will give the uh, one of the table regarding to the crystal field activation energy okay let us note all the all the things regarding to the crystal field activation energy 
Now we'll discuss the crystal field activation energy. So based on the crystal field activation energy, how the complexes are determined whether labile or inert. Okay, we'll discuss the previous case. So if CFA values are positive, then it is inert complexes. Negative or zero or lower values, then it is called labile complexes. Now we'll go through the, now here it is a SN1 reaction. After this, I'll, I'll cover the SN2 reaction. Now here SN1 reaction, that means the coordination number through the number five, coordination number five. Okay, so coordination number five means a square pyramidal is better intermediate uh, uh, over than the trigonal bipyramidal here square pyramidal so one is a, a low weak field complexes another one is strong field complexes now let us go through the so d0 to d10 configuration octahedral values so i would like to take in the octahedral values dq for the better understanding okay now here we know that uh, crystal field uh, activation uh, is the stabilization energy now here 0 minus 4 minus 8 minus 12 uh, these are the like a weak field complexes uh, of octahedral now here these are bosolo pierce was suggested the uh, like a square pyramidal and uh, like a trinidad by pyramidal intermediate cfac values okay so here 0 minus 0 0.457 okay according to the our previous uh, mathematical expression of crystal field activation energy now the intermediate minus uh, complex cfac of intermediate minus complex now here 0 minus 0 0 so minus uh, like uh, it is 4.57 not the 0 minus 4.57 Okay, so now intermediate uh, minus of minus that means uh, minus 4.57 minus of minus uh, 4 that means here it is plus okay minus 4.57 plus 4 is equal to we will get the minus 0 0.57 minus 0 0.57 in similar way we will calculate all the values over here so now we will get the positive values here d8. So that's why it's shown the inertness in case of weak field complexes we will get the positive value of the crystal field activation energy at the D8. Okay, so in this calculation of crystal field activation energy, we will neglect the gentler distortion as well as uh, electronic electronic repulsions. Electronic electronic repulsions. So in case of electronic electronic repulsions, D2 is minus 6 or DQ only. But here we did not uh, consider those electronic electronic repulsions as well as gentler distortion. Okay, that's why I'll go through the very simple manner. Now, in case of weak field complexes, we will get the D8 configuration only is positive, remaining all. Or negative that's why remaining all the configurations are labile remaining all are the labile we'll go through the uh, our strong field complexes okay it is very uh, like a different one when compared to the weak field again now here the values are uh, uh, increased up to d6 configuration why because all the electrons entering into the t2g orbital only so that means paid up takes place after that it will be decreased 4 8 12 16 20 24 then after 18 12 6 0 okay now the square pyramidal values which is also suggested by the Bosolo PSR so these are the values of the square pyramidal crystal field stabilization energy okay so now however the crystal field activation energy the formula is intermediate minus uh, complex intermediate minus uh, complex we will get the values minus 0 0.50 minus 1.54 plus 2 plus 1.43 plus 0 0.86 plus 4 minus 1.142 2 minus 3.14 so here we will get the so many positive values so many positive values so now here so the d3 is positive value d4 is positive value d5 is positive value uh, d6 is positive value d7 is not positive okay now here d8 is positive value okay so among the uh, these 11 configurations d8 d6 d5 d4 d3 is positive d8 d6 d5 d4 d3 is positive so all the values are inert complexes these positive all the values are inert now uh, i assumed uh, all these values in the lability order now i would like to write the lability order of the complex compounds lability order okay so the lability order so highest positive value lesser labile lowest positive is more labile okay so the uh, these all are inertness uh, uh, highest value that means more inert uh, lowest value is uh, less inert now among the all the values are here 4 is maximum 4 belongs to the d6 so d6 is min uh, like a minimum uh, lability minimum lability after the four the values are two so d3 and d8 having the similar one d3 and d8 having the similar values now again 0 0.86 and 1.43 is there so 1.43 that means d4 then finally like a 0 0.86 that means d5 
So this is the liability order of uh, strong field uh, complexes in SN1 mechanism. Now let us go through the SN2 mechanism. Now let us go through the SN2 mechanism. Here SN2 mechanism, it is the octahedral complex, octahedral wedge complex. We will take the octahedral wedge complex over than the pentagonal vapor metal. Why we take the octahedral wedge complex? I will discuss the like stereochemistry of uh, uh, complex compounds. We will discuss the over there. Okay. Now the CFA value, intermediate minus octahedral value. So in similar way, in previous way, we will get the values over the uh, like a uh, negative positive zero sometimes uh, negative positive zero now here in case of uh, uh, like a strong field complexes here also octahedral wedge octahedral wedge complex so here also we will we'll get the like d0 to d10 configuration again the cfa value intermediate minus uh, uh, like a uh, complex so now we will get the those values so now let us go through the weak field ions now here d3 configuration as well as the D8 configurations is positive. So D3, D8 are inert. Okay. I think uh, I missed out over there in case of the D3 configuration. In previous case also D3, D8 is inert. I think I did a mistake over there. Okay. Please make it uh, D3, D8 or inert complexes in both the cases. Okay. Now here, so in case of strong field ions, so now here the positive value of D3, D4 is not there, D5, D6, D7 is not there, D8. These four are the uh, like uh, inert complexes, so remaining all are labile complexes. Here D3, D4, D, uh, sorry, D3, D5, D6, D8 are inert complexes, so remaining all are labile complexes. So, so now here among these four, uh, the lability order like this. So highest value is D6. Then after like D3, D8 having the equal energy. So the, then the remaining D5 is lesser than among the four, among these three. Okay. So now this is the liability order. So among the 10 here, D6, D3, D8, D5 only inert complexes remaining all our labile complexes. So this is crystal field activation theory very clearly explained the D8 is a inert complex. Inert complex, uh, valency bond theory does not explain the like inertness of D8, compl uh, D8 complexes. Okay. Now we'll go through the like liability and inertness of the uh, uh, non-transitional metal atoms then after I'll give the some of the generalization rule don't miss out of those generalization rules okay Now, let us discuss the factors uh, of uh, liability and inertness. So the first factor is non-transitional elements. Okay. Now, what will happen in case of non-transitional element, liability and inertness? So, in this case, we will discuss the three, three things. One is the like a charge on the complex. Charge on the complex. Now, the second, size of the metal. Now, the third, charge by size ratio charge by size ratio so uh, in the second case uh, the geometry of uh, complex compounds geometry of complex so in this first case the non transitional elements which these rules are applicable for the transitional elements also okay now the first case is charge on the complex charge on the complex now let us go through the aluminum alf6 minus 3 so this is the complex like a uh, silicon f6 minus 3 minus 2 like a P of a P of six minus one. Okay. So now here the central metal atom uh, like a charge here aluminium plus three, silicon plus four. Okay, plus 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 five. Why? Because minus six uh, like minus six uh, whenever it it went to the like right side then it becomes plus six plus six minus one plus five. Okay. Now here plus six minus two that is four. Now here plus six minus three is three. So whenever the size like a uh, charge on the complex increases uh, liability decreases charge on the complex increases liability decreases okay so that's why the liability order like this okay now here the more charge lesser liability lesser charge more liability so this is the first uh, first thing now the second thing is uh, like the size of the atoms okay now we'll discuss uh, calcium h2o six times plus two like a magnesium okay the first thing is a, like a magnesium 
Now the second one is calcium H2O6 times plus 2. Third one is strontium H2O6 times plus 2. Okay. So uh, top to bottom uh, size of the cation increases. If size increases, uh, size is directly proportional to the liability. Okay. If size increases, then liability also increases. Size increases, then liability also increases. Now the order like this. So, okay. Now the third case is uh, like a charge by size ratio. Charge by size ratio. Now here NA H2O6 times plus now like mg h2o 6 times plus plus 2 now here al h2o 6 times plus 3 al h2o 6 times plus 3 here n a plus mg plus 2 okay al plus 3 according to the first rule charge on the complex increases liability decreases that means here the symbol is a, like a, a greater than okay now what uh, uh, let us check the second one size increases what will happen now plus 1 is a, a bigger size than the plus 2 plus 2 is bigger size than the plus 3 so now here the more size and more liability uh, less less size less liability so here the two factors are obeyed that's why here the charge by size ratio like this okay these three points regarding to the like a uh, liability and the inertness of the transitional non-transitional complexes non-transitional metal atoms so now let us find the final thing is a uh, geometry of the complex okay now let us go through the like a square planar geometry now here it is the square planar so square planar having the vacant orbital so uh, the vacant orbital readily like uh, readily accept the uh, incoming ligand that's why here the more prone for the substitution reactions so more form for the substitution reaction. So the strength of nucleophile uh, will enhance the leaving group capacity. Among the four, one is lever. That, uh, that, that capacity, the strength of nucleophile increases in case of a square planar complexes. The best example is NaCN4 like a minus 2 it readily reacts with a, like a CN14 like a, it is isotopic nucle isotopic cyanide which is readily replaces the NaCN4 like one of them is uh, isotoped isotoped okay uh, 114 so this reaction will give the information the square planar complex is more labile than octahedral square planar complex is more labile than octahedral okay this is the simplest point now we'll discuss the some of the generalization points so very useful points don't miss it at those generalization points Okay, now I will add the some of the generalization points regarding to the liability and inertness. Okay, previously I will give the four points. D0, D1, D2 configurations are labile in octahedral complexes. Again, uh, the uh, electron, if electron entering into the orbital, then it is also labile complexes. But one exception is that D8 configurations are inert, uh, which is not explained by the VBT, which is explained by the CFAE. We will discuss it very clearly over there. Okay, now the in case of inert complexes, D3 plus 3 are more than plus 3 oxidation states or uh, inert complexes uh, if uh, less than plus 3 oxidation state it is uh, like a uh, labile complexes d4 d5 d6 configurations are uh, inert complexes this is our discussion okay now we'll go through the, some of the generalization points so all complexes all complexes of s black elements are very labile okay so s black complexes are very labile uh, except uh, small size of beryllium plus 2 magnesium plus 2 okay now second point so complexes with the m3 ions of the f black elements are very labile okay so that means uh, lanthanides or actinides plus 3 lanthanides plus 3 actinides are very labile very labile in nature now the third point complexes of d10 configuration generally it is labile generally it is very labile so like zn plus 2 cadmium plus 2 mercury plus 2 why because it cannot enter the like any substitution why because it is completely filled okay so across the 3d series uh, metal 2 ions are generally moderately labile okay across the uh, like uh, scandium 2 zinc uh, uh, so the gen generally more moderately labile among the all the 10 so copper plus 2 is uh, most uh, most labile due to the it's a uh, distorted gentler uh, distorted gentler nature now the fifth point so the complexes of metal 3 that means uh, d black elements plus 3 complexes uh, very distinctly very lesser labile than the plus 2 that means uh, plus 2 is more labile than plus 2 plus 3 plus 2 is more labile than uh, plus 3 now the sixth point is d3 and low spin d6 configurations are non labile 
plus D3 and uh, low spin D6 configurations are long labile due to the uh, its larger LFSE value. So those are the examples chromium 3, Fe2, cobalt 3. Okay, those are the examples. So we will discuss the crystal field stabilization energy also. So but uh, these complexes, so non labile means uh, which is uh, like a uh, moderately between them, like you know, turned, uh, inert and labile but a uh, non labile is a kinetic word so inert is uh, like a inert, inert is uh, another term of the non lability okay don't uh, don't confuse with the non labile and inert complexes both are very similar okay now the but chelate complexes are completely inert so those are d3 as well as d6 are the same configuration with chelating complexes like a fe uh, like uh, any chelating complex bipedidyl three times so the such type of complexes are completely inert so the final one 4d and 5d series that means uh, like a uh, rhodium iridium series like a uh, ruthenium osmium series 4d and 5d series are non labile that means uh, very closer to the inert uh, so due to the its larger lfse value it's larger lfse value so these points are very helpful to predict the lability and inertness of the complex compounds okay thank you for watching